Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. <sighs> Dire team back. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Radiant team back. Ten seconds remaining. <laughs> Dire team back. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. <laughs> Radiant team pick. Master Dire Team Pick Ten <laughs> So uh, for some reason they like me a little bit they decided that I should be casting this game number two in English for you guys Inside the Dota client, so this is EG Bulba versus Four Life. We've got them playing in the semifinals. This is game number two of the best of three set. Disruptor. And I'm Pythian Legume here in the client Dota TV, as well as on twitch.tv slash Pythian Legume. I've got Keep on the ab Abs. He's got Abs as well. And I don't think so, actually. Um, we're going to be getting into this game. Got a disruptor already picked up by Four Life on the dire side. Tide Hunter. Radiant team pick. And uh, Four Life has also also gone for a Tide Hunter. So we're gonna see them. Uh, Gonna get a pretty good team fight combo for this one, and uh, EG Bull have gone for a Beastmaster Phoenix combo. We see how that works out for them. Five seconds remaining. Reserve. Uh, last match did end up going the way of uh, um, uh, EG Bulba. So if they win this match, they will be into the final against EG. The winner of that goes into the regional qualifier for America's region, which will only have eight teams in it, um, as far as we know. At least that's what it was when they put up the list. In any case, um, EG Bo it's actually really hard to <laughs> call the teams here without the names there. But... EG Bulba have gone for Beastmaster Phoenix, a uh, build that we've seen a couple of times. They may actually throw out a Drow in there. Um, the last two times that we saw this, 
start to a draft, the next one to come was a Drow or a Lich. We'll see if that happens here for EG Bulba's crew. Looks like we have a, a pretty big a split between teams here. Two members of Team Freedom and then one on the Dire side. Um, Yuar is on the Radiant, Ush is on the Dire. Just a bunch of teams all over the place. Both teams have some fairly strong players. And we will see what ends up happening in this one. Ten seconds remaining. A couple of bans out from the teams. The Dire go for the usual Faceless Boy ban out once the other team has Phoenix. And they'll also take out the Bounty Hunter. You generally do not want to work against the Phoenix and Faceless Void combo in addition to a Beastmaster. Giving teams that pretty much guarantees that your team fights for the most part are not going to go very well. And the Doom and Death Prophet were also picked up by EG Bulba. So they are going to uh, not be in this game. Not No pushing here from the Dire side. Or at least not with the Death Prophet. And a Doom Ban is something we haven't really seen a whole lot in these games, but it does make a little bit of sense. Up against here is that the Radiant might be picking. The Dire side, they've gone for the Juggernaut now. It's a pretty strong threesome that they've gotten for, for life. You keep going with the draft. I'm um, going into reserve time here for EG Bulba. They've currently got a pretty good combo. And most teams seem to be waiting to pick up their mids towards the later part of the draft. So, EG Bulba right now, they've gone for a Beastmaster and a Phoenix. This is my first time seeing the teams in this tournament. They actually go for an Io, so um, one of the heroes on uh, EG Bulba is an Io god, and that is what they're going to be playing for this match. Can work pretty well. Beastmaster gets the roar, and then Io comes in with Relocate and another hero, and to just blow up whichever hero got initiated on. That usually works pretty well with Relocate. Reserve time. We'll see what ends up happening here. Our team's taking a while to get through the draft. And we have been here for quite a while. We started with the EU qualifiers earlier in the day. And then we went to the Americas. And now we are still doing that. We are going through the Americas qualifier, trying to get through the last semifinal here. We already saw EG beat Perky Pepperonis in the first one. And then we will see EG against the winner of this best of three set. If it's EG Bulba that take it, then EG Bulba will be facing up against EG in the final. And if it's For Life that take it, we'll be going to a game number three. So that could make the day turn out pretty late, to be honest. It's already past midnight here on Eastern Standard Time, or Eastern Daylight Time as it is. And uh, for life has actually gone pretty low on their reserve time. They're down to two seconds and they go for an Enigma. So a tight Enigma throwback to the beginning of the 6.87 patch, I believe, where... Back near the Shanghai Major, this combo was pretty much unstoppable. Five seconds remaining. We will see if it remains unstoppable in this match, though. Looking for the hero that pairs up with the Wisp on the Radiant side. It could be a mid. Most likely it's going to be a mid that ends up pairing up with the Wisp.
I'm going to take a, quite a bit of time on this. Still have the list, little bit of the draft left to go through after this one. I think secretly I'm kind of hoping that EG Bowl will win so that we can get right into the final, because I definitely want to get that hype final done with. But we will see if it ends up being a longer match like we saw last match. I believe the last one went to 57 minutes, so a fairly long one. And both teams really wanted to get the farm done. And these teams are vying for a chance to stop EG from, from fulfilling their destiny to get back to TI6. They can beat EG. EG are going to have to go into the second qualifier. If EG wins, they will go into the regional qualifier to face up against the likes of Dota, Digital Chaos, um, Complexity, Bolt Tour Team. We've got Five seconds remaining. Drinking Boys in there, and a few others. Radiant team back. Alchemist has been picked up, picked up by EG Bulba here, so they're gonna have a pretty good way to end to the game if they end up behind at any point. Alchemist is pretty good at coming in from behind if he has to, but he's also going to get a pretty good start in the game. He's going to get a couple items on the carries, uh, over the carries of the dire side pretty quickly. The only question is, are they going to have the means to be able to deal with him? They can get the initiation on him, things are easy, but then the wisp can always come in to mess things up a little bit. Swardart and Weaver are the bands out from the teams. And we're going to be seeing this draft come to a conclusion pretty soon. Ten seconds remaining. And both teams are fairly low on reserve time. We're going to be done pretty quickly. Still need a safe laner for EG Bulba. And they are going to go with a Morphling. That's an interesting pickup. I'm not really a huge fan of the Morphling, but it can definitely stay alive through the initiation of For Life, and they are going to go for a Timbersaw to uh, finish it off, put him in the mid lane, and they're going to put a lot of their um, DPS hopes on the Juggernaut. And they're also going to hope that their huge team fight is going to carry them to victory. With that being said, we're going to hop into game number two of this best of three set between EG, Bulba, and For Life. Okay, here we are in game. Looks like we're not going to have a pause. So we can get right introduce into introducing our teams. We've got here for um, EG Bulba. We've got Juby on the Wisp. On the Phoenix is going to be KD35. Uh, apologies if I get any of these names wrong, but they are doing some interesting things. On the Beastmaster is going to be Boris. Got a Morphling handled by Ritsu. Uh, our mid lane, uh, Alchemist is going to be handled by Yawar. And now here for 4 life, we've got Disruptor played by Mario. Guard Timbersaw handled by Can't Win With Me. Ix Mike will be playing the Tide Hunter. Our Jungle Enigma will be handled by Way Too Sexy, very strong on him. And finally, the Juggernaut, that's going to be Ush. And we are going to see at bottom, Ix Mike getting forced outside of the jungle by two heroes here of uh, EG Bulba. Uh, EG Bulba going to range over towards the bottom rune spot, and our side are going to be waiting for him, seeing if they can find anything, find any kills. Not many things leveled up this yet. If they can get it onto UR, it would be a good thing. But for life, we're just going to run over towards the rune, and they're going to be able to take it. Uh, E.T. Bulb are going to send Boris over to the top rune spot to pick up that bounty rune. Mm -hmm. 
So he will get the first bounty rune of the game. Juby puts down a sentry ward near the ancients. And see if there is a an observer there at all. And you are going to place down the first acid spray at mid. So without going for the Grievel's Greed, it allows him to uh, put some damage on the Timbersaw. Timbersaw hasn't leveled anything just yet. And Alchemist is going to get some good gold here at mid for the first wave. Ritsu is getting a bit aggressive on the IX mic. Now, the Wisp uh, Morphling combo is something that has been used quite a while ago. But we're going to see it again in this match. Yuar puts down the Acid Spray once again at mid. He's now got the Grievel's Greed this time, so he's going to get a little bit more gold from it. Um, Timbersaw could be good in mid, but he's taking a lot of damage from it, and the Reactive Armor doesn't, doesn't really seem to be enough. Can't afford to go very aggressive against Yuar, though, because you are not going to be getting any of that control that you would probably need to kill a Timbersaw. Mm, Ritsu playing against Ix Mike here at bottom. He's gonna get some help from the Io, and Ritsu's playing very aggressive at 400 health on him, and you can see how much those creeps chunk him down. Yuar continues to push out the mid lane, and actually can't win with, with me. He's uh, taking a lot of those creeps out. Of course, Way 2 is gonna have a great day in the jungle. He's gotten the clarity up, moving towards another lane, seeing if he can get the stack off, being as efficient as he can. And over in the offlane, Ix Mike has already rotated off, gotten level 2, and he is currently hitting the hard camp. Wisp makes it a little bit easier for Yuar to get to the rune. He picks it up, puts it in the bottle, and he gives the bottle, I assume, back over to the Wisp. Beastmaster for EG Bulba, they are inside the jungle. And we may see a bit of a go here. Timbersaw is putting some harass onto Yuar. And Yuar is going to take quite a bit of damage from the Whirling Death, but he continues to get some good farm from this acid spray. And Yuar is going to keep going on to Timbersaw. Nigma's currently doing really well inside of the jungle. He's at level 4, which is basically in line with the mids in the game and the solo lanes. And Beastmaster gets killed by a neutral creep just to get back to uh, the base a little bit faster, get his mana back. Doesn't really care about dying at this point. A little bit of a problem here from, I guess, both teams if that, is that their supports aren't that active in the cup, first couple of levels. So, a Disruptor doesn't really want to go around the lane too, or the map too much by himself. And with an Enigma inside the jungle, he doesn't really have the ability to go for anything. I mean, he could be rotating over to try to get Yuar on the mid lane, but he doesn't really have that ability. Acid Spray once again dropped in the mid lane by Yuar. It is now a level 2 Acid Spray. And Timbersaw has 3 levels in reactive armor. Uh, Wisp once again helping out Yuar at mid. <coughs> and Boris goes into the trees. There could be a spin. The Glimpse is there from Disruptor, but he's a bit out of range. And they decide not to use it. Probably a good choice by them. Yuar has now got a double damage rune. A Timbersaw may need to be very careful, especially with this Io coming in, slowing down the Timbersaw. And he's getting some good denies there. And Yuar just keeps swinging. Level 4 and a half for Tidehunter. I ex -miked. He's doing okay at the offlane. He's... Doing pretty good at farming, getting the stacks up on the Ancients. Not really got a whole lot that bothers him right now. And Jubu's just spending a lot of time over at mid. And with three levels into the reactive armor, this acid spray really does not hurt the Timbersaw at all anymore. He's just gonna get those stacks up and will regen. 
Pretty much whenever he's inside that acid spray. Rich, so still at basically max and agility, and that's one of the things that Morphling does. He punishes your team for leaving Halom in the safe lane. He could possibly take a lot of damage from this, and you can see how much those tower shots chunk him down. Uh, Timber's still getting a bit aggressive at the mid lane. He's got his shotgun available. Yuar goes towards the trees, trying to juke it out, and he gets away from the wisp. Timbersaw continues to go in here. In here. Doesn't have enough mana for a Whirling Death, could have it in a second. The balls are gonna come in, and the tower shots are there. Way too's ready with the black hole, and he is level 7 already. That's gonna ward everybody off of that mid lane. You do not want to fight anymore. Doing that little body switch, bottle switchy thing over at mid. They decided to just put it onto the wisp, not really care about who has the haste rune. You are basically gets up to full health, almost full mana. And the first tower of the game is going to go to four life. Ash is just pushing it in, use the uh, regen ward. And this boar is waiting around for the night. Is he able to get it? Nah, it's not there. It's a good try. There's no reason not to go for it. Juby could get caught out here. He is going to have Vision of Ush, and he's going to be able to tether away over towards the mid lane. Uh, Ush is going through the trees right now. He could find Juby. Juby's going to tether over to the Alchemist. Alchemist, he's running away right now. Not want to be anywhere close to this. Mario is ready, Ush is ready with the Omni Slash, and Yuar, he is going to be complete, com completely unawares here. Uh, Enigma's also gone back in. All he needs is the level 6, but he has not even gotten it. Now with the creep down, he's going to pop his ultimate, and that's going to be first blood. They've taken down Yuar inside the jungle, and then Phoenix is forced away. Juby comes in with a nice tether. Wasn't able to quite save the Alchemist there. So much damage. And at seven and a half minutes, that's gonna be your first blood. Yoar goes down inside the jungle. It's a bit unfortunate how he got stuck inside the jungle with like about six, six HP needed to get to level six, and he was so close. But it took a little bit too long for him to actually get that little bit of XP because of all the people around that camp. Uh, he has almost made it to the armlet. And he'll pop the ultimate just to fight up against uh, Timbersaw. And Timbersaw barely takes any damage from him. All he has to do is stand in an acid spray, and he's going to have full health. That's how strong the skill is. Now, Ritsu does end up taking the tower at bottom. And Yuwar is going to get chased down by Timbersaw. Timbersaw just sits in the middle of the acid spray. Look at that. 36.4 HP regen. We're going to see some laser in by the Phoenix. Has to dive away. And the Wisp Balls are still hitting. Ush is getting blocked out a little bit. Wisp is going to tether away. And are they able to actually find anything? Ush, he's got an Omni Slash. Ritsu probably has to start thinking about morphing to health and yeah it's going to be there and Ush could get taken out that's going to be a waveform right on top of his face and the TPO wave will be there from the wisp and Juby makes it back to the base good rotation and Ritsu just able to stay alive there playing very very closely with the uh, strength uh, morphing Currently level 8, almost level 9, and he's going to pick one level up in the replicate. Ix Mike, he's got an anchor smash that just misses Ritsu. And Wisp is still at level 3. Way too sexy, he's going to be moving around the map, hasn't used his first black hole yet. And he's almost at the mechanism. It's like 25 gold until he gets in. He'll just buy it up now and have it delivered by the courier. And they will go in on the mid lane. See if uh, EG Bulb would decide to uh, go on this at all. 
And here comes the Acid Spray. They're going to put it down inside the lane, but that's only going to give Timber Cell so much HP regen. At 36.4 right now, Iwar doesn't quite have the concoction. There's no way that they can actually go in on this, but Ritsu is here. He's just healing up so much. I mean, they need to stop hitting him. <laughs> They're not doing it. 40.4 HP regen on the Timber Saw. And Ix Mike is ready with the Ravage. Tower gets destroyed by the Catapult. And they go on to Ritsu. Ritsu is going to waveform away. Ix Mike looking for the Ravage. Is he going to find it? The Yeah, it's going to get popped here. And it only really only hits him to Ritsu. He's going to stay alive. He's getting killed up by the Wisp. Here comes Yuar. They can't really do anything to the Timber Saw. They need to stop focusing him down. <laughs> the anchor smash on him. Ritsu does basically no damage. Way too now. He's got the black hole. Yuar. He's actually going to go into the armlet. Completed it. The primal work goes out on the Ix Mike. And the EG Bull, but they turn it around. Jubi trying to stay alive. He is not taking any damage from the disruptor. It is going to be in there. And Yuar chases down Mario. No. Ush on the back side trying to do some damage to Ritsu who is so tanky at this point. I feel like Ritsu is, or Ush is taking more damage from his ta his illusion than anything here. And he will end up going down Ritsu. Uh, maybe end up finding the Timber Soul kill. But this guy is so tanky and he's still got mana. We could have found the Disruptor, but in any case, the Timber Soul gets away. And that's a pretty big fight going the way of EG Bubble. It's 900 gold on their side now. And I guess as we move past the 10 minute mark in the tower going down, it's time to look at the net worth. And it is 6,000 on Morphling right now, working towards a Lincoln Sphere. And he is being very uh, hard to kill here for the dire side. He can basically get hit by so much, and it doesn't actually hurt him a whole lot. We're going to keep watching the Timbersaw. He's working towards his Bloodstone. He's currently got the Point Booster and a Soul Ring, and he's so efficient. Drops the Arcane Boost before he uses the Soul Ring. Gotta love the efficiency. Wait, walking around here. Looking pretty good on the Enigma. Currently level 9 and has a Soul Ring mechanism, keeping his team uh, well healthed up. Take a look at this farm on Juggernaut. Currently at a phase boost and a calling blade. He's gonna be trying to go for that battle fury. Dyer's top tower and that IX Mike now has a blink dagger. Bird's going to get taken out by the Thunder Strike. And for life, they're gonna go and try to push into the tier one tower bottom. Enigma doesn't have the black hole for another 50 seconds, used it in the mid lane. And they will go in onto the tier 1 tower. There's not really a whole big of an, att an attempt to defend this from EG Bulb, but they're just, just going to wait it out. And the tower gets taken down by Enigma. That's going to be the first, second, third tower down for, for life. And Ritsu is pushing up elsewhere. He's trying to work towards his Lincoln Sphere. He's got about... I guess 600 gold away from it. And Yuar almost has his Radiance. Once he gets his Radiance, things are going to get a lot more difficult from poor life. And Ritsu's now gone on to the top lane. Tower is taking a lot of damage from Ritsu. He's down to 680 uh, agility right now and doing 170 damage per hit. Four life has gone into the Roche Pit. They're going to be taken out fairly. Um, this is actually not quick by any means. And they've got some good damage with us. They have the Eidolons there, but they're definitely going to lose the top tower. Ritsu may continue pushing. Roshan, he's down to 3,000 health. This is taking quite a while. I believe that immediately when this is done, um, four life have to go right back to the base. And Tidehunter is just going to take a little swim outside. Leave it to Ix Mike to use the taunts, of course. 
I don't even know if the Radiant saw it. No, they don't even have vision up there. <laughs> so there's no way that they actually saw the Tidehunter swimming. Now Ush, he's got an Aegis and he's working towards his Battle Fury. He just hits so slowly with the Fire Spirits on him. And he's going to get a couple of denies on those creeps at mid. Yeah, you are? He's getting closer and closer to that Sacred Relic. He's now at the Ancients. I'm getting very close to finishing off the item. Got his ultimate available. He's going to go over to the rune. And the Wisp will give him all the charges. And he will also get the stack off onto the creeps, being as efficient as possible here on the Radiant side. And Wixu is able, well he's going to get Glimpse back, and he's very tanky right now. He's very close to getting taken out though, and they're actually going to waste a black hole on it. And the relocate is there! Jupy saves him! Now let's see if he's able to do anything off of it. Or if... Yeah, they're going to try to engage off of it. So the Wisp is going to be back there. He's able to relocate over. And Juby is so strong. Also, you noticed how he had the relocate on the high ground. And he was just able to tether right over. Um, some very good play by him. Yuar is going to get caught out. There's no black hole for this. And the concoction is available if he wants to use it. I Mike, he's got a Ravage available. Yuar is trying to get out, getting spun on. And he will get taken down. Yeah. Here comes Ritsu though, he's cleaned up the, the Disruptor. And now Ush, he's trying to get away from this one, get slowed down. Uh, Shotgun's gonna come through and Ush is gonna get completely cleaned up by this laser. Are you able to get enough? Uh -huh. Yeah, the yell goes out onto him and Ritsu is now here, they pop the Aegis. And Juby, he's almost down, but they can't really afford to go on him. 17 and a half minutes as Ush takes so much damage. From taking the Necrobook down. Ritsu has a replicate away if he wants to use it, but he's just gonna stand and try to fight against Ush. To currently at 150 damage per hit. And he's gonna send himself and his illusion through the through the chakram and he will TP away over to bottom. Interesting that he goes over to bottom, it just goes to show. Uh, one, he's got a Lincolns. Two, Wisp is also pretty good at healing him up. And Wisp is coming outside of the base right now. Right now, EG Bulba. Maybe getting closer to facing actual EG. We take a quick look at the XP and gold right now. XP is nearly even. Going in favor of the Radiant fairly soon, and that worth is 2,000 in favor of EG Bulba. Ritsu is going to go right in onto the tier 1 tower at mid. Do quite a bit of damage to it, and well, the stun is going to be there, and the tower can get denied. There's going to be the static storm, and Ritsu trying to stay alive as much as possible. There's going to be another real K out by the Wisp. Tower gets denied, and Wisp may be going down fairly soon. Let's put this back and he's going to get blocked in a little bit by the Eidolons. And Timbersaw will steal all the health and take him down. So a bit of a loss there for uh, EG Bulba, but they are still looking pretty good. And who is waiting inside the trees? Not anymore, he's going to TP away. And Mario and Juggernaut cannot find him. Timbersaw's bloodstone is now up to 14 charges and, he's, and he has 1800 gold in the bank. You are right now. He's still got his age, or Radiance. And Morphling makes an illusion of him. That's a pretty big combo right there. You are ready to go on to mid. He's got a concoction. And he's just gonna walk away. We are 20 minutes into the game, even on kills, and this is kind of the way most of the games go for these teams. They 
like to get their farm up. They don't really farm a whole lot generally. Or sorry, don't really fight a whole lot generally. And that's part of the reason why the last game went to 57 minutes. And a lot of these NA games are going like that. Forest, end of the trees. He's got the Necker 3 available as well as the Hawk. Hawk is giving them some good vision here. But it doesn't really actually show them anyone on the dire side. Ush is waiting. Level 2 in the Omni Slash. Way too sexy. The black hole is also there. But I feel like EG Bulba may just push him through the mid lane. There's going to be a relocate here, and they just completely clean up the Juggernaut. They managed to get the Roar, and now they go on the way to taking so much damage from the balls, and they all smack him in the face. Now they're inside the base, and Tidehunter, Ix Mike in the middle of everyone. Ritsu just really wants to go for the. The tower and Ike's Mike almost going down. The concoction hits. That's a double kill for Ritsu. And now the Phoenix Ultimate is going to get dropped down. Oh no, EG Bulba. They could have a very quick match here. We're only 21 minutes in. The base might get broken. Yuar is hitting it very quickly with the ultimate and he's hitting it hard with the armlet. They send in the Alchemist Delusion forward, burning down all of Four Life Squad. And that's going to be the first racks going the way of EG Bulba. Players are going to back up, they maybe could have taken down mid fairly quickly, but instead they decided to push out bot. Rosh Roshan, he is, well, primary timer still down for a minute. And Ritsu, he's gotten a very early E-Blade on Morphling, and that's a lot of damage going into 4 Life squad. And it's going to be a smoke up here. And I believe they saw it. Yeah, they definitely saw it with this word here. Really good vision placed inside the base. And we'll see if Forlife are able to find anything. They know where the smoke was, and they're just going to all back up. Alright, Timbersaw is ready here. He's got the 14 charged bloodstone. Uh, Alchemist is going to get a replicate of himself in the high ground, and, um, that is not your base. Uh, Four Life decide that they're going to drop some items inside of the Radiant base, and here comes the Alchemist. He's put the concoction out. He's going to throw it on the Timber Saw. They've got to take him out very quickly. Yvart being very aggressive here, and there is the Rip, the, uh, Ravage, and they take down two huge kills. Alchemist and Morphling down. And now Timbersaw could be in trouble. There's a roar available from Beastmaster. He blinks forward. He'll get it. And now there's some damage from the IO. They've also dropped down the uh, Necro books. Now it's a kinetic field. It's going to keep them out of here for now. And Timbersaw is going to get away with the help of the uh, Disruptor. We're going to keep going here down the mid lane. Uh, we've got the Necro book doing the Lord's work. Runs and push onto the towers. In terms of items, Timbersaw's gotten two boots of travel and a plate mail. Um, Way too's almost got a blink dagger. And Ush, he's currently sitting on a Yasha and a Battle Fury. A Titan just almost got an Aghanim Scepter. That'll be an interesting pickup from him. Lots of spam to try to take out the waves as they come towards the base. It's a good high ground defense tool. Bottom, Mario is going to get hit by the E-Blade and Ritsu is stuck inside the kinetic field. Is he going to be able to get anything here? Doesn't have vision and he guesses the wrong way. Mario's out. Perhaps Ritsu shouldn't have stared looking at the kinetic field for so long. And there's going to be a yell here onto the timber slot and the relocate in. They've got Ritsu and... Oh well. Okay. I was just trying to get out. He will be able to get away from Ritsu. Um, Timurisol just decides that life is not worth it and he just wants to suicide. And they take the Io and Morphling back bottom to possibly push. 
Uh, you are is going to scout out Roshan, and they go into the pit. All of the members are up right now for for life. Beastmaster drops down the Necro book and he's gonna go forward onto Ush. Could be in a lot of trouble soon here. So Timber Saw. Timber Saw's ready, blink backwards by Boris, and he's gonna try to TP up, but there is a glimpse. And the replicate or sorry, the relocate is down for 40 seconds. We're trying to get aggressive, aggressive onto Ush, and well, it's just not going to be enough. But the rest of um, EG Bulba, they're going in on the bottom, going in on the mid, and they could take down all the remaining R tier 2 towers for, uh, for life. <laughs> yep. That's the debut of the Aghanim Scepter, slowing down uh, in a wave and decreasing the armor. But all the tier 2 towers are down and with the ages Ritsu may even decide to go for high ground they may just wait for the Beastmaster though Jubi's dropped a bottle inside the river is it over to you are who will drink the bounty rune from the bottle I'm not really sure how that works Mario's smoke doesn't quite get popped. They've got an illusion going in towards the base of the alchemist. He'll continue to push. Who needs a manta style when you have this? Well, alchemist does apparently because he does have a manta style. And he's also getting closer to the octarine core. We can take a quick look at the XP, but uh, we might miss something as Ix Mike is being a little bit aggressive along with the timber saw. They're looking for something to kill here, but they are not going to find it. IX Mike doing some damage, literally one damage against the, the tier 2 tower. Phoenix could be in trouble, gonna go into the ball, and there's no damage here from for life and now IX Mike, he's taking enough damage and won't be able to get the Ravage off. No Ravage for this fight, he's down for 50 seconds. Disruptors was also taken out by the Beastmaster, and they're just gonna leave Ush alone. They go over to mid, they wanna go high ground. Disruptors down for 30, Tidehunters out for 40. They have a pretty large window to actually take fights here. And here they go towards the base. They could be getting this game number two win in just a few moments. Ritsu's ready. He's going for the tower. He's going to get fortified. And that is going to be Ush. They're forcing out the spin. Ritsu getting aggressive. They put a lot of damage on him. The concoction is there. It hits on the timber saw. Way too is ready with a blink black hole. But he might not have enough. Okay, they've popped the Aegis. Does way too go in. Remember, Juby is always ready with that relocate. And Ritsu takes down the tier 3 tower. I believe uh, EG Bulba may just back up. They backed away from the mid lane after taking down the tier 3 tower. 21,000 net worth on Alchemist. We're 29 minutes in. That's just kind of what happens for the hero. And they're still walking around the map, seeing if they can find anything. Enigma, they're going for a roar, and roar it goes on to way too, way too. He's getting chunked down by the Necro books, and oh, Beastmaster gets away. Now they're trying to take down Wei Tu. They need to turn their sights here onto other heroes. Taking a lot of time on this. Ritu goes for the combo. He will find it on the structure. Now pops the BKB, and that Ravage was terrible from IX Mike. Basically hit exactly nothing with it. And that's going to be a double kill for Ritu. They could try to take down Ush, but they don't have enough damage, and Ritu goes into full agility gain. Uh, going in on to Way2. Way2 has the black hole available. Boris. Yep. Ritsu completely annihilates Enigma over at top. And meanwhile, while all that is happening, there's an illusion at bottom. They're pushing in the creeps and they're doing some damage to the tier 3 tower. Alchemist stuns himself with that concoction, but he's got the ultimate up right now. And it's really only the Juggernaut, and they roar at him. There's going to be a concoction, and they completely wreck him. Forcing out a buyback from Juggernaut. 14 kills to 8, 30 minutes in. 
EG Boba could be rolling all over for life in this one. As middle set of racks are done. And Usher's just gonna follow the Radiant side over to the tier 3 tower. And at the dieback, be a son. He is not done just yet. He's gonna get burned down a little bit more. And he does make it back to the base. Nah. That's that's a dieback from Juggernaut. And the Sexstorm gets it put down. UR takes a lot of damage from it. But while all that is happening, what is Morphling doing? Morphling's actually dead. Um, do they kill the Wisp? Yeah, Dagon is there. Dagon takes him out. That's a t okay. Timbersaw is a Dagon. That is interesting. Lots of gold going the way of Four Life. 5,500 off of a couple of kills. Even with the dieback on Juggernaut. But Morphing down for 30. Alchemist down for 40. And he gives Four Life a couple more moments in this game. They're still down two racks. And we'll see what ends up happening for them. XP and gold is going a little bit in favor of War Life at this point, but that's kind of to be expected. Um, nearly taking the tier 3 tower down, and War Life has gone for a smoke. This is, this may be it if they end up hitting it. Or if they miss it, it would probably be it. Ritsu a little bit far up. They could find him, and he's going to get Black Gold. Morphling right on top of it, and Ritsu, see ya. They have no love for him over in the Radiant Jungle. And there's really not much that uh, EG Bulba can do about it. Uh, Phoenix very far up, gets silenced up by the Static Storm. There has to be another death on the Phoenix. Daz, Dagon, it's hit the IO and there's a gem on the ground. Boris now, he's going to get hit by it. The Concoction throws out, it hits a couple. And can they actually kill Timbersaw? Yuwari's going forward, he's just gonna burn him right down. It's a Wicked Streak going down buyback. And there's a concoction, throws it on the Mario. And the Necro books are probably going to chase him down and kill him. Double kill for your war. Lots of heroes from 4 life. They're going aggressive, and Boris is able to TP out. Ix Mike just swims over there to check if anything's going on, but it's not. Uh, meanwhile, inside of the Dire Base, I mean, the game is pretty much over at this point, but the creeps, they're doing some damage to the Tier 4s. I wouldn't be surprised if the game actually ends to creeps while the teams are still killing each other. Here comes Yuwari, he put the Acid Spray down, he used his BKB, and Omni Slash going around all the members of the Radiant side. It's not really focused on anyone. Concoction does hit Ix Mike, he doesn't have the ride for another 70 seconds. I was just able to get out. And Tide Hunter buys back. Timbersaw finds a kill on the Boris. Beastmaster buys back. And Timbersaw trying to get out of it, but it is not there. Luar finds another kill. And not like it even matters, but Ritsu is just gonna finish off the Mega Creeps over at bottom. And that's gonna be the Mega Creeps. Ritsu is down, has a buyback available. And no boots of travel. Wouldn't have enough gold for it anyway. So he's just gonna let the Mega Creeps start to take down the dire base. And just from those creeps and not really doing anything about it, most of the dire base is gone. Ix Mike once again puts an acid, uh, an anchor smash onto Yuwar. Yuwar uses the Manta style, goes on to Ix Mike, and the dive through is there. They get the yell on the something. It's actually on the Ush. And Phoenix goes into the laser. Ix Mike able to blink over to the east or west or north or south. It really doesn't matter. He's able to get out of there for now. Concoction available. Ix Mike burning down. And that's going to be a double kill for the Phoenix in with the laser. And EG Bulba. They're going to take game number two here in 34 minutes. Not nearly as long as the last one. But now EG Bulba plays EG in the final of the America's Open Qualifier to TI6. Once again, thank you all for watching. This has been Pythian and Kip on the Ops. I uh, bring you this game of Dota 2 off of Dota TV as well as inside the uh, twitch.tv channel, twitch.tv slash Pithing Legum. I'm on Twitter at Pithing Legum. Give me any kinds of tips or flames, just go do it. I don't really even care. Uh, we'll be back with the finals in just a couple moments. Stick around. And it's late. I'm not sleeping. We'll